This is the brand new Hyundai Verna priced between 12.98 lakhs to 20.60 lakhs on road Mumbai. This being the 1.5 turbo petrol manual is priced at 18.98 lakhs. This being the turbo actually gets a few additional features on the outside as well as on the inside. But turbo is not written in red. Why? Notice this opening here, it's only there on the turbo variants for better breathing of the intercooler. Looks a bit weird though. The turbo gets black inserts for a sporty feel, like on the alloy wheels which get diamond cut treatment but don't look wow. The turbo variants also get red colored brake calipers, sportier looking all black seats which will obviously warm the cabin in this hottish climate, red inserts on the seats and on the dashboard as well. The dashboard is also finished in all black for a sportier appeal unlike the dual tone treatment in the MPI variants. But this is a brand new car so... Unwrapping done and now it's time to talk about our sponsors for today which happen to be an amazing fintech platform called PayMe. It's a RBI registered NBFC into digital lending which offers attractive discounts and interest rates with complete digital onboarding and easy repayments. Taking loan from PayMe requires minimum KYC and can be availed without any collaterals. The approval is instant. PayMe is fully compliant with recent RBI digital lending guidelines. Check the link in the description to know more. Coming back to the Verna, don't you think the rear design resembles a bit like that of the Škoda Slavia? This car also gets the recent design trend of a connected tail light and Verna is written right on the inside. Certain design elements will also remind you of the Aura and there are a lot of cuts and creases on this car. Look at this and this and this as well. And time for the most important test. The fingers of truth! The exhaust is actually hidden right underneath here. Now let's talk about the design of this car. Kaisi lagi varna? Bahut achhi. Purani wali dekhi hai? Yes. Purani wali achhi lagti thi ya nayi wali achhi lagti? Nayi wali. Kya achha laga? Is guy had headlamps or headlights achhi lagi. Sach sach bolo mujhe achhi nahi lagi itni zyada. Achhi achhi. Aapko achhi lagi? Yes. Theek hai. Side se, aage se, piche se kaun sa best design hai? Side se aur piche se. Andar se kaisi lagi? Andar se bhi badhiya hai. सही बोला सब अच्छा बोलते रहो तुम लोग वीडियो में आना इसलिए अच्छा बोलना जरूरी नहीं है चलो थैंक यू द न्यू वन इज वाइडर बट शॉर्टर इन टर्म्स ऑफ हाइट दैट्स वाइट हैज अ बेटर सी डी वैल्यू वेन कम्पेयर टू दी ओल्डर वर्ना इट इज नाउ लॉन्गर विद अ लॉन्गर व्हील बेस एज वेल दिस इज द मिनिमम लेग रूम That is the maximum leg room, which means that rear seat leg room and knee room is much improved. But under thigh support is average at best for someone as tall as me, and that is why headroom is also an issue for me. You do get a manual sun blind for the rear windscreen. The seats are nice and comfy. The driver seat also gets electric adjust. but not for height adjustment which is still manual the verna comes with a lot of features remote start fully digital 10.25 inch instrument cluster with nice graphics a new 10.25 inch curved infotainment system which is very slick to use a reverse parking camera with adaptive guidelines again the display is awesome front and rear parking sensors as well ambient light which gets a massive 64 colors that's right that's the same as what mercedes benz cars get the verna will also tell you what is the aqi inside the cabin it also gets a driver rear view monitor it also gets a slew of connected car features with multiple language support there is something known as phone projection which is basically apple carplay and android auto it also gets inbuilt navigation ventilated and heated front seats a wireless charging pad auto dimming inside rear view mirror steering mounted controls steering adjust both for reach as well as rear climate control air conditioning how did we not unwrap this and this an electric sunroof which was also there in the older one so no big deal here it opens even further though height adjustable front seat belts an awesome eight speaker bose audio system with tweeters as well as a subwoofer and it sounds like this nice isofix child seat mounts automatic headlights with four sensors at the front and four sensors at the rear as well rear ac vents two usb c charging sockets at the rear and one usb c and a regular usb a at the front it also gets a 12 volt charging socket here rear door pockets are of decent size there is a storage compartment below the rear ac vents magazine pockets two of them two cup holders in the rear center armrest and two right next to the handbrake there's some storage space below the front center armrest as well and a decent size glove box with a cooling function but the first aid kit is a bit cheap front door pockets are huge and you can keep two bottles on each of the front doors unfortunately there's no sunglass holder here it also gets something known as smart trunk i have the key in my hand i come behind and stand and automatically the boot will open in 3 to 1 oh it's too fast it already opened 
This feature is very useful if you have a shopaholic wife with both your hands having a lot of shopping bags, the trunk will auto open. And the boot is huge. I can easily fit inside this one and I just have. Not very comfortable though, because obviously, ah, there's a light here though, and speakers. Guy ko stunts karne ka bhai. And before you say, Hunde ne paise diye hain, here are five things I don't like about this car. Number one, the design. It's polarizing. I mean, the front end is a love it or hate it. And why is this Hyundai logo so big? It's even bigger than my mic box. And the design of this two-spoke steering is also evoking a lot of polarizing opinion. Some like it, some don't. Attracts too much attention because this is obviously a brand new car and it's a Hyundai, which means that people would want to buy one. And obviously the Verna has quite a lot of legacy. That's the reason it becomes a little difficult to shoot because everyone is stopping and looking at the car. Some like it, but most love it. So, although most of us find the design a little polarizing, I feel quite a lot of people like such edgy stuff. Number two, lack of diesel engine. The Verna just comes with petrol engine options and the 1.5 MPI should have actually been the 1 litre turbo and the 1.5 litre turbo is the 1.5 litre turbo. But discontinuing the diesel was not cool. Number three, confused variant lineup or rather confused communication of what features are offered. I was told that the turbo variant gets rear disc brakes. But apparently, only the DCT gets it. Because people who drive a manual need to use engine braking, right? I was shocked to see there are no rear discs on the turbo petrol manual. Why? Even the electric parking brake is only available in the turbo DCT variant. In the manual, you get a physical handbrake. But at least I can do this. <laughs> Number four, some really funny cost cutting. Like in the world of LEDs, why are the indicators halogens? And that's there even at the rear. There are no front fog lights as well. No request sensor on the front passenger door. Maruti actually offers it on both the front doors. This car is running on 16 inch wheels, but the spare wheel happens to be a 15 incher, which is not even an alloy. It's a smaller size spare wheel. Why? No rear center headrest. Why does the rear center passenger not have a head? I presume so. This car does not get automatic wipers, a feature which many cheaper cars also get. And this key is now quite dated. Come on Hyundai, give us a new key. Point number five, the suspension. It's too soft, which results in a little bit of bounce as you get to higher speeds and the handling isn't great. It is much improved from before. Even the steering is better when compared to before. But for a car which has 160 horsepower, I definitely expected better. Fortunately though, there are a lot of things to like about the new Hyundai Verna. Here are five of them. Number one, safety. This car gets Hyundai Smart Sense Level 2 ADAS, which means there's a radar here, a camera here, and multiple sensors all across the car to offer you lane keep assist, lane departure warning, automatic emergency braking, forward collision warning, blind spot assist, reverse cross traffic alert, and the list of ADAS functions are endless in this car. Wonderful. It also gets smart cruise control with stop and go functionality and high beam assist. Six airbags are now standard across all trims. Mind you, this car still hasn't been tested by Global NCAP yet. So I'm still going to wait for the results before making a judgment. And its rivals, the Škoda Slavia and the Volkswagen Virtus have got five star rating from Global NCAP. Actually not from Global, it's from Latin NCAP. Cut this shit out, Faisal. What are you talking? Get your facts right. Point number two, the AC and audio controls. With things going too digital, we definitely miss physical controls for certain functions. But trust Hyundai to invent something. Now this panel here is for the air conditioning, but you can press a button here and swap it for other functions for the in-car entertainment system. Isn't this something which is very much revolutionary? Amazing stuff Hyundai, really like this. Point number three, quality. The fit and finish of this car is impeccable. Quality of the interior is fantastic and even the horn sounds so nice. Okay, enough of being horny. Sorry, honky. Oh, that's the name of a car. Number four, performance. While I'm not a big fan of the old MPI engine which Hyundai continues to offer us with the Verna, they could have easily continued to offer us the one litre turbo, but no, they have offered us a much more powerful engine. This is a bigger 1.5 litre turbo petrol engine, four cylinder, producing 160 horsepower, the most powerful in the segment, 253 newton meters of torque. The result is 0 to 100 kilometers per hour comes up in 8.1 seconds and claimed fuel efficiency is 20 kilometers per liter. Nice! <laughs> Number five, Hyundai sales and after sales, which is just impeccable. This car comes with three years unlimited kilometers warranty, which can be extended all the way till seven years. It has the lowest maintenance cost in the segment 
and then you can opt for packages up to 5 years for repair and maintenance as well. You get 3 years complimentary blue link which is the connected car bit and you get 16 free OTA map updates as well. Nice right? Now it's time to actually test ADAS functions of this car. So we are going to start with forward collision warning. There, it's saying collision warning, be careful. So yes, that works very nicely and flawlessly. Next, we are going to try the, oh my God, where are the stones coming from? Okay, now I am just going to overtake this car and then give a right indicator there. It's telling me, no, 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 do not try this stunt. And next is lane keep assist, of course. So is it going to read the lanes? It is actually reading the lanes there. It's putting me back into the lane. Keep hands on steering wheel, it says. So yes, it does identify that as well. So the ADAS functions obviously work really nicely on this car. But if you're new here, this video is over for you. If you're a true fast beamer, this is what you've actually come to see. Yes, me driving the nuts out of this car and giving it the beans. So what you're going to do is, we're going to continue to drive in this eco mode till we find a open patch of road. Yeah, the suspension is super duper compliant. Steering wheel is a bit weird, I would say. But anyways, we have found that patch of road. I don't know what is there in the center, which means drive mode right away into sport. There are three modes, eco, normal and sport. Traction control, when I press it once, it actually gets it into dynamic, dynamic traction control. So here, yeah, traction and stability control limited. I keep this button pressed and then it completely turns off the traction control and the ESC as well into first gear revving the motor listen to this guys listen to this the most important sounds this car makes revving till 5000 rpm goes till 5200 rpm then it comes to 4900 rpm and off we go 1st gear 53 and wheel spin on upshift as well so it is going to reach 96 kilometers per hour in second gear my goodness this engine is super potent pulls really strongly and red lines around 6500 rpm so this is a 1.5 liter turbo yes it is i've already told you the specs but og fast beamers might be starting the video from here itself oh there's the sounds which keep coming of adas functions so uh, let me tell you that 160 horsepower oopsie doopsie doo is the most powerful in the segment 253 newton meters of torque is also very nice result is there's so much grunt it really pulls strongly minor lag assist side once the turbo kicks in my goodness the punch is really strong the way it pulls gives you a nice kick in the pants feel as well and the gearing is also on the taller side the gearbox is very slick shifting the clutch is also on the lighter side very nicely calibrated as well and then around the corners oh my god it does roll quite a bit i mean it does roll a lot as such so that's a bit of a problem here i've actually uh, got it into second gear a little bit of honking will not hurt anybody and this dynamic corner here we go right I don't even feel where the front wheels are going so it's not very dynamic in that regard I'll tell you the real problem the suspension is just too soft here the chassis has been stiffened of course and then steering wants to dance on its own keeping lane keep assist in mind come on put me back into the lane so like I was telling you the chassis is on the softer side which is both good and bad. Good for low speed ride, bad for higher speeds. It gets a little bouncy as you speed up. And then obviously there's a lot of body roll. The steering is inconsistent, better than before, but center position, my goodness, it's all for a toss. Okay, check this out. I'm going to show you, okay? Look at the roll it has. It's like crazy rolling. So if you're making quick lane changes like this, the car roly poly is a lot. So in terms of dynamic ability, the Verna is still not there. It's far from it. The city is obviously better to drive. So is the Virtus, so is the Slavia. So that's a bit of a bummer here, but yes, it's more comfort oriented, especially for the city. Ride in the city is really nice. This engine is an overkill in terms of performance. It's just next level. Obviously you can't wheel spin like mad in the turbo DCT, but nothing beats a proper manual and kudos to Hyundai for not putting the stupid IMT here. I'm thankful for a manual because a manual is a manual is a manual. In fact, it wheel spins like mad. Like here I'm turning and Yeah, it wheel spins on upshift as well. That is a level of performance. Now you see a bump, you want to make a quick lane change. It just moves too much. Doesn't stay so planted. Super soft suspension. I don't know why. Maybe with the N-line version, they're going to stiffen things up. But as I see it, it is a very fast car, but not fun because the steering plays spoiled sport. This two-spoke unit's weight balance is only gone for a toss. And then you can see center has no feel as such. It kind of feels super vague right here. 
and then doesn't transmit too much confidence and feedback either so in terms of performance mind blowing in terms of dynamics a little bit on the poor side i would say so here we're going to come to a halt brakes are really nice actually but the tires obviously screech i was going to come to a halt but i thought let's do it ahead because there's a nice corner to take so we're going to take that corner a little aggressively i love the way there's just endless surge of power available here in fact here we go yeah you see the roly poliness is just too much in this car nice in terms of uh, getting the downshift done early on because the gearbox is actually a fun unit fun in the sense it doesn't have that feedback or the crisp slotting in but it is soft and doesn't have any uh, what do i call those in tata and mahindra cars notchy feeling yes notchy feeling is not there here thankfully so fun car to drive things need to be stiffened up grip levels are nice but it wheel spins like mad that's the kind of performance it has to offer like check this out yeah it's just going to do this mad wheel spin for no reason whatsoever because you know 253 newton meters is mad 0 to 100 km per hour in just 8.1 seconds what is 8.1 seconds it's very fast trust me it's very 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 quick okay and that's the fun here you have got a multi information display i can browse through this showing me the compass tire pressure monitor and the adas functions as well so that's kind of nice i really like that and this is my favorite corner so what you're going to do we are going to come to a halt here into first gear revving the motor and off we go proper wheel spin 6200 rpm red line did i say 6500 before oh i was so wrong okay it doesn't inspire confidence for me to push it like ha oh my god the rear balance is going out of line itself so it's not very dynamic in that regard this car has done only 141 kilometers i got it maybe under 100 kilometers so i'm doing the perfect run in in terms of fuel efficiency you can expect somewhere between 7 8 9 kilometers per liter if you drive like this but if you drive sanely expect somewhere between 10 to 12 kilometers per liter in the city which is nice on the highway you can stretch it to almost 13 14 kilometers per liter which again is very nice indeed so performance blows your mind i love the way this engine pulls it is so reassuring it is just so much fun it's a very nice and fun car minus the steering and the chassis balance there is something that honda still needs to catch up it doesn't really need to catch up because i've driven the i20n which is having low lops of power and absolute mad stiffness they just don't want to make the car stiff in the interest of comfort and soft suspension and all that go over a bump you can feel it i avoided that because that was a, like a huge crater on the road as i see it a lot of people will opt for the 1.5 liter with the dct box for the sheer convenience it has to offer and also has a few more features and all that's also a good thing <sighs> nice anyways okay now we have to go over a little bit of a bad patch of road no problem at all you still miss a diesel because no matter this has 253 newton meters of torque it just does not have the torque rush of a diesel okay it says collision warning all the time because with a diesel engine obviously that instant torque lower down the rev range after that lag really gives you the push back and obviously doesn't really suck the fuel efficiency out of the car here when you drive aggressively the turbo is like yeah you want power take it but you have to pay for it in the cost of fuel efficiency of course and that's a bit of a bummer i would say sort of a missed opportunity of not offering an even more dynamic package but i'm sure n line may they were going to cover it with a louder exhaust some more cosmetic tweaks also they are already doing black alloy wheels here and red brake calipers so what are they really going to do? Oh, look at the bounciness okay it bounces a bit at higher speeds so soft suspension is not always the solution for a comfortable ride because it only works till a certain extent and after that you are like mm, now what out on the highways at higher speeds or highway speeds it's not going to be very glued to the road as such some more bad bumps on our way and our roads are just filled with such roads uh, like there's such bumps here another one and you can feel the jolt inside so that's something which could definitely have been better of course the horn i've already played it before it sounds nice of course another bump and yeah suspension can get a bit noisy but overall refinement is really nice this engine is super smooth super silent super refined super super kitna super bol do but it's very nice i really like the way the suspension has been calibrated for city driving and most people end up buying it for the city and then there are few verna enthusiasts who swear by the car they are going to end up buying it and then modding it of course and then you do that obviously things will be different and then they'll do stage 1 stage 2 tune that will obviously bump up the power and torque as well now you want to see a flying phone no problem keep your eyes here because i am going to do the brake test and we are going to go at 100 km per hour and i'm going to slam on the brakes there we are at 100 ish and it's time for the braking test okay i'm at 110 now and now 
Oh. Brakes are actually good, like really nice. So time for a quick U-turn. Uh, turning radius is not bad, not bad at all. Steering is light at low speeds, a Hyundai speciality and yeah that is the way it wheel spins it's a wheel spin freaking monster so guys this is my vlog of this hyundai one the new one the 1.5 liter turbo manual and there's the 1.5 liter regular petrol engine also with 115 horsepower and 144 newton meters of torque yeah eight red lines at around six and a half thousand rpm it's a CVT, so obviously there's that rubber band effect. Doesn't feel that sprightly to drive. In fact, we've not even reached 100 kilometers per hour still. So yes, performance isn't that great. That's a bit of a bummer here. The one liter turbo would be better than a 1.5 MPI for sure. In terms of driving characteristics, more or less the same, but this is an automatic, so obviously you cannot launch it aggressively and then obviously it doesn't have the same level of torque, which the other engine has. No wheel spin, nothing of that sort is ever going to happen, but you've got paddle shifters. It doesn't give you any manual control of things. So definitely an average engine, the one to buy if you don't really care about driving or care about cars or care about fun or care about whatever. Let's get back to our turbo petrol because I love that. Regular petrol engine also with 115 horsepower and 144 newton meters of torque. Avoid that if you can get the turbo, nothing like it. A turbo is a turbo is a turbo. Revving the motor. It wheel spins like crazy. There is uh, no resistance at all from the traction control system or from the chassis. The chassis vibrates a bit, but it gives you the performance. <laughs> yeah, it does vibrate quite a lot. And then wheel spin on upshift. Yeah, it even happens when you upshift to third, although the wheel spin is a little lesser, but in second, it does wheel spin quite a lot. Now the thing is that, uh, what is the thing? I forgot. <laughs> Anyways, the point is that the automatics are more efficient. So 0 0.6 more efficient the DCT is compared to the manual in the turbo variants, obviously claim numbers. And one kilometer per liter more efficient when you talk about the 1.5 naturally aspirated petrol engine because that gets a CVT. That's one kilometer per liter more efficient. 19.6 versus 18.6 kilometers per liter. Claim numbers, obviously you're not going to get anything of that sort ever in your life. So we're just going to come to a halt and for the final launch of this video, if you like this vlog, make sure to give it a thumbs up. That's a like button and don't forget to check out Pay Me. Here we go. Remote start. Chale bhai. Number two. 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 Number two.